my name is Zubair Zedi. In this video lecture, we are going to understand something fundamental in networking, the end-to-end -end packet delivery process, or simply how data travels across the network. Learners, have you ever wondered when you send an email to your friend or you browse any website like www.cisco.com, networkbinary.com, or even you watch a video? What happens behind this communication? How does your data travel across the network? We will break down the entire end-to-end -end packet delivery process into simple, easy 14 steps. We will see the OSI model layers from the application layer towards the down layer. Talking about the agenda, of course, I'm going to cover the application layer when the data generates on this layer. When the data goes to the transport layer, UDP and TCP protocol are used. What happens at the network layer, the IPv4 header, IPv6 header, and I'll be talking about IPv4 header. What is the duty of address resolution protocol and what happens at the layer two? It's frame and finally we will see the physical layer. So let's get started. Learners, before diving into this slide, let me explain the topology that I'm going to use here. We have the center on the left side, the IP address is 1.1. This is the layer two MAC address. On the right side, we have the receiver having the IP address 2.1 and that's the layer two MAC address. We got one router here between the devices. This is the 1.2 IP address on this interface, gigabit zero slash zero. This is the layer three address on this interface, zero slash one. The MAC address we have, we can see here on this screen. Now what happens here when this user wants to generate some data to this uh, receiver 2.1 IP address? At very first, the user, it, it contacts to the application layer. The application layer, it says, hey network, I have some data. I'm sending the data to 2.1 IP address and I don't need it to be delivered reliable communication. Now at a transport layer, it says, it checks the requirement of the application layer. Since this is not reliable uh, connectivity, the transport layer says, I'm gonna use one of my protocol at the uh, my own layer, the UDP, and UDP never establish any connection before sending the data. It says, please pass me the data. I'll be using the UDP and then the communication will be done here. Now application layer says, all right, here's the data for the transmission. Step number two we have here. We got the application data. Now, when the when the transport layer, it receives the data, it uses the UDP. UDP says, at very says, I'm going to encapsulate the application header data into my UDP header. Then it contacts to the network layer and it says, hey, IP, I have data for this IP address. The network layer say, says, I'm gonna use IPv4 header. So uh, I'll be encapsulating the source uh, application data, the transport UDP uh, header and into my layer three IPv4 header. Since it uses the source IP address 1.1, destination IP address 2.1, and in the step number three, it found that the network layer says, I have found my own network 1.1, destination network is 2.0 by calculating the end operation. Learners, we already have seen in my previous video, the end operation process, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So with the help of the end operation, it has found the destination network is on different network. In this case, the sender says, I have to contact at very first to the gateway IP address to send this data. Now the, the network layer, it contacts to the data link layer. The data link layer contacts to the address resolution protocol and it says, hey, uh, do you have the MAC address of this IP address or of this gateway IP address? The app says, hold a minute, let me see that on my app cache table. Learner, this is the first communication so the ARP cache table is completely uh, empty. The ARP says, nope, I don't have the MAC address of this IP address. 
you have to wait while I'll find or resolve the MAC address. Learners, we know the address resolution protocol has two steps, the ARP request and the ARP reply. Now, the entire communication from the application layer uh, to the network layer, this communication, this data, it goes on parking lot on, on, or, or on hold and the ARP says, I'm going to use the ARP request message and, 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 and it announced that my network, my IP address is 1.1 and who is 2.1.2 IP address. I'm, I'm looking for this IP address to resolve the MAC address. So ARP request source MAC address, it uses its own layer to MAC address here. Destination MAC address, since we have no idea the MAC address of the gateway, so it uses the broadcast MAC address. It means this ARP request message is going to be flooded inside this network. Again, the data is on hold. The router, it received the ARP request message. When it receives the ARP request message, uh, it what uh, does it do? The router says, I have received an ARP request message on my this interface. So I'm going to map the MAC address to this IP address in my ARP cache table. Have a look here. 1.1, the mapping with the layer 2 address, this one. This is the sender MAC address. Now the router, uh, it says, I'm going to reply the ARP reply with my MAC address. It says, I'm going to use my own MAC address, 0 slash 0 interface MAC address, and destination MAC address it has already received. So it uses the MAC address as a unicast MAC address. It means this communication is going to be unicast communication, not the broadcast communication. Learners, always remember, our request is the broadcast communication and our reply is the unicast communication. Now the sender receives here the ARP reply. Again, it looks, it found that I have resolved the MAC address. So ARP says, I'm going to add the 1.2 IP address, MAC address in my ARP cache table here, 1.2, and that's the MAC address of the gateway. Now it, it says, now I got the information, it contacts to the layer two and says, hey layer two, I got the MAC address, I resolved the MAC address. Now you can use to uh, transmit the pending frame. The layer two says, all right, I'm ready to transmit the pending frame. So we got the encapsulation, the application header, the UDP header, the network layer header, destination IP address, source IP address, layer two header, the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. Now the sender, it transmits the pending frame towards the router. Now what happens when the router receives a frame here? The router, it receives the frame at very first at the physical layer. The physical layer, it transmits the frame towards the, uh, you know, the data link layer. The data link layer, it de-encapsulates the frame and what the layer two of the router are found inside the layer two header. It says, I have found the a frame, I have received the frame, and inside that frame, uh, my I have found my MAC address. It means I'm going to pass it this frame to the network layer of the router. The network layer of the router, uh, the, the layer 3 of the router, it found that inside this IP packet, the source IP address is 1.1, and destination IP address is 2.1. It has found that the destination is, uh, this IP packet is not destined to me. It is destined to the 2.1 IP address. In this case, router says, I need to perform the routing here. Routing routing is needed. Now router to let says, since I need to perform the routing, so I will forward this packet to the appropriate, the next hop next hop or the uh, next interface IP address. Now what happens um, at the step number 11, the router, it looks the routing table in order to perform the routing. It has found that the 2.0 network is directly connected to my interface 0 slash 1. Since the network is directly connected, it means I can forward this packet directly to the destination host. The router Layer three, it contacts with the layer two of the router and it says, hey, layer two, go ahead and send the packet to the destination. 
Now again, this is the first communication. The router also need the MAC address of this PC. So it looks its ARP cache table and it, it found that the uh, inside the ARP cache table, I have only one mapping with 1.1, but there is no entry for 2.1. It's layer two MAC address. Again, we know what is going to be here. The router is going to generate the ARP request message and we know uh, it is the broadcast communication. The ARP says it announced mine IP address is 2.2 .2 IP address and I'm looking for this IP address to resolve the MAC address. It sends the ARP request message using the source MAC address. It's on interface MAC address, destination MAC address. This is the broadcast, so it uses the broadcast MAC address. Now it floods this ARP request inside the network. The sender, excuse me, the receiver PC, it received the ARP request and it does the ARP reply with its MAC address. So it says, I'm gonna use my source MAC address. It's on my interface MAC address. The destination MAC address is the unicast MAC address. So it replies with the ARP reply and the router receive here the ARP reply message. At very first, the router is going to add the 2.1, the PC MAC address with its MAC address inside the ARP cache table here. So the ARP has uh, the mapping of 2.1 with the, uh, the receiver PC MAC address. Now the ARP contacts to the layer two of the router and it says, I have the mapping for this IP address to its MAC address. Now you can transmit the pending frame towards the final destination here. Now the router, it, it caught entire information which were needed to transmit uh, the data to the destination device. It uh, We got the encapsulation, the application header, the UDP header at the transport layer the net IPv4 header source IP address, destination IP address, the layer two frame, uh, we got the source MAC address here, which is uh, the exit interface MAC address. The destination MAC address is the, uh, the this device MAC address. Then the louder layer two says, now I have complete information to transmit this pending frame. Now I can send out the, pen, the pending frame toward the destination device. Finally, my device, my receiver, it receives the uh, the complete frame from the sender, which is 1.1 IP address. So learners, this is the all about the end-to-end -end process communication model, step by step. I hope you found this video helpful, informative. Keep learning and teaching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.